gear in the Guild Wars 2 is unlike any MMO you've ever played before. You can get your gear as quickly or as slowly as you want to. There's no grind in a certain dungeon or a raid for the specific drop. Everything is either craftable or selectable from some sort of reward system. All gear that you get is relevant. Whether you put the game down for 3 months or a year, when you come back you might still be within your meta build. And this means that everything that you do is important. Every single decision you make can be done and can be reversed. And therefore, it's a very forgiving gear in system. Although, quite complicated sometimes when you think about it, I'm going to try to break it down for you today. Guild Wars 2 has a couple of tiers of armor. First of all, you'll have white armor, which is completely useless and kind of phases out as you get towards level 80. Then you'll get blue item armor, which is kind of common and very good. Green slightly better. Yellow is fairly decent. And then you get orange, which is exotic armor. Exotic armor is basically the step you'll take just before endgame. It's quite easy to get. We'll have a look at some options of how to get some good exotic armor. And if you're interested in doing some sort of higher tier content like big meta events, fractals, and maybe even dipping your toes into some raiding and strikes, exotic armor is completely fine. In fact, some of the best players I know might hop into something like a twin logos and exotic armor and out DPS everybody else. It's not really about the armor, it's how you use it. Exotic armor, the orange tier, is only about 5% on armor and weapons and 8% on jewelry weaker than the best in slot armor. Therefore not making it that much worse. Then you get the best in slot armor, ascended armor. Ascended armor is the end game armor and has a special unique slot where you can slot in infusions, taking your bull just to a little bit of a higher level. And after that, you do get legendary armor. Legendary armor and ascended armor are exactly the same in power. The legendary armor is no better in any way, other than the fact that I can change my armor as I want to. I can go to my armor, customize it, and take out pieces or change the stats without having to do any sort of penalty. There is no reforging the armor or losing my runes. I simply can just take things out and change them, making this legendary armor just a little bit more user friendly. First, we're going to look at how to make full exotic armor. If you don't care for this and you want to go straight to the ascended armor, click on those timestamps below. The first thing I want to look at in our quest to get either exotic or ascended armor is crafting. Crafting is a highly important part of Guild Wars 2, if not so, probably the most important. A lot of materials and utilities are locked behind crafting. For example, legendary armor requires certain crafting to do. Certain gifts are only craftable by certain professions like artificer or weaponsmith. Certain refinements, certain utilities and even roots can be locked behind crafting and be much cheaper to craft by yourself than to buy out of the auction house. All ascended armor is technically craftable. This is an example of a crafting website guide. Normal guides, let's say leatherwork here. And here you can see that in total it's going to be 18 gold to initially do this and you can recover about 2 gold. So I net it's going to be about 16 gold 53 silver to get to 400 crafting remember they don't go up to 500 if you scroll down it will show you what to buy from the vendor what things you can get and then a few things you need to buy at the trading post and the expected price then from level 0 all the way down to level 25 and then from 25 onwards and such the only thing this guide doesn't take into account is sometimes the extra experience that you get from your masteries and that will actually make it a bit cheaper. So you might not have to buy everything that they recommend. But if you follow all the way the guide down, it will take you to level 400. Which is going to be pretty much perfect for when you start going for exotics up to ascended gear. Also with that being said, this website also does automatically update based on auction art prices. So sometimes it might be more expensive to buy certain things. It will kind of change as the prices of the auction has changed. So I'll link this in the description below. 
There's probably some other websites, but this is the one that I use and I think it's fairly decent. Once you hit level 400, you'll be able to make your exotic armor. For example, these Berserker Gloves. You can see that at level 400, I'm able to make it and craft the individual components, which will give me experience pushing me up towards level 500. Although, when getting to this point, you might find that certain ingredients are quite expensive. For example, powerful blood can be quite expensive depending on the week. There are cheaper times in a month to buy them, as generally there are people handed in map rewards, which is another money-making thing of Guild Wars 2 to be aware of. Again, the reason why crafting your own exotic armor is so important can actually be very decent is A, it's quite quick and easy to do, although requiring quite a lot of gold and is generally probably more expensive in the long run. But then again, you will need to cap your armor for other means, whether you're going to go for Ascended or Legendary later. So therefore, perhaps it's not the worst thing in the world to pay a little bit extra up front, but rather get the experience and cap it. Although, there is a cheaper way to get exotic armor. Let's look at another method now. Welcome to the trading post. This is probably the most efficient way to get armor when you hit cap. Some armor can be quite cheap and some quite expensive. So, I have filtered for the stats of Berserker. I have a couple of options. Some are quite expensive based on their cosmetic and also just because a lot of these stats is pretty hard to craft like diviners. Let's sort by price and we can find a set of berserker gloves for very cheap. Very important to notice that it's also a level 80. Don't get caught out by buying a level 78 pair. Although we can take these and just simply overplace and, and destroy the room by putting another room on top. Generally it's considered that power will use berserker with maybe one or two assassins pieces especially if you're going to use exotic armor don't forget that you're losing five percent of your stats therefore in this piece on a general other piece you can see that my legendary armor has 34 precision with this has 32. it doesn't seem like a lot but over an entire set of armor and also jewelry and weapons you will lose a bit of precision perhaps calculate the deficit of precision and maybe switch out one or two pieces to assassins why the auction house is also really good is some stats are fairly hard to craft like vipers for instance vipers is very hard to craft as a lot of the pieces are coming out of different meta events and as you can see are quite expensive to make therefore making it maybe more worth it to kind of go straight from a power build into ascended armor for vipers there are a few ways to get around this high cost of certain armor sets To get around these restrictions of crafted armor and high auction house prices, stat selectable exotic armor. Back to crafting we go, as one way to get around this roadblock is a crafted set of armor, the War Beast. The War Beast is a stat selectable level 80 set of armor, although fairly expensive to make, as it requires you to get oiled forge scraps. If you're like me and you do somewhat of a lot of world v world, Another way to get around it is the Warlord's Armor Boxes. Once opened, you can choose a stack selectable piece of exotic armor. So just pull out the piece and put whatever stat you want on it. Although there are several other options, I would also just mention the Bladed Gear Boxes. These can drop out of the meta event Inverted Brink, some of them from the Matriarch, and some of them you'll actually have to buy from this vendor. There are also exotic stat selectable armor. And I think that's quite a couple of examples. Now that you've got a couple of options, you should be able to kind of get yourself into some exotic armor and get yourself pretty much to the point where you're competitive and rated. Only being about 5 to 8% behind is not a bad place to be. Let's say that you make yourself a full set of exotic armor. What is the stats you, you need to look at that you might be lacking as opposed to being in full ascended? Perhaps you find a guide on snow crows or meta battle or just on the internet and you can only build the build but in exotic what is the most important thing to do for power it's to actually cap precision and have full crit chance guild wars is a funny game in the sense of at full capacity with proper boons i'll be capped on crit chance i'll be at 100 percent which means that every single hit that i do will crit and therefore 
Ferocity will be my next important stat. Increasing the damage output. For Ferocity and also Power on a Power Build are almost uncappable stats where Crit obviously caps at 100%. So therefore, the most important thing to do is to cap Crit and then have some very good Ferocity and Power with that Crit. And that will make sure that I do the most DPS. If you're playing a Boon Healer, the most important stat would be Concentration. Making sure that if there is any stats that you've lost while using the exotic armor, that you make back up for it either using a concentration sigil or finding a way with utilities to make sure that your concentration is high. I also want to put a preference on this or uh, an asterisk on it. When looking at a guide from someone like, say, Snowcross, their absolute god tier speedrunning guild, they run at the lowest boon durations possible to put out the most DPS possible. Therefore, if you look at one of their guides and you're a new player, go a little bit extreme on, on boon duration. Go a little bit more extreme on, on, on healing and boon duration and even maybe a bit of survival if you're tanking. If you're tanking, don't tank on the lowest toughness. If you're tanking and you're a healer, whether you're doing 4k or 2k DPS, it doesn't matter. It's not going to make the, the world of difference at the end of the day. Push your little boon duration and your toughness up to make sure that you're comfortable. Especially the fact of a lot of their content is based around perfect stacking and perfect play. They face fights quicker than anyone else can face it. So therefore, make sure that when you have enough boon duration or you're given boons to give over the amount of boons required. Because your split phases might last longer. Your team might not be as well stacked. And that's basically the most important advice I could give. Even if you're playing a DPS boon giver, do the same. Go hardcore on concentration. Make sure that your boon duration is well above what's required. Also, when it comes to armor, exotic armor, and weapons, don't be scared to put your best rune or sigil into the weapon or armor. Let's pretend instead of this being rune of strength, it's rune of the scholar, which is definitely the best for uh, DPS builds and power. Say this piece I had upgraded now to an ascended piece. If you use a black line salvage kit, which has 100% chance, and you salvage this, you will get the rune art. And then you can just simply slot this into your ascended armor. Now, what makes ascended gear so good? First of all, we know it's in game stats. The same stat output as legendary armor. But what makes it really good is, first of all, it's the first set of armor with an infusion stat in. Infusions are a bit strange. You can either slot in something from world v world for just five stats or you can have a look at two other options pure agony resistance which is only useful in fractals in fact sometimes the higher the agony resistance the better output you will get or you can go for a combination the plus nine plus five nine agony resistance and five of a specific stat this is pretty good for fractals and for things like raiding and dungeons and landscapes those little five extra stats might not seem like a lot, but with all the infusion slots and all the pieces of your armor, it does add up to a little bit. Ascended's also really good, because when you've gotten Ascended, you can trade it. It's no longer character bound like an exotic piece, it's account bound. So you can send your best gear over from toon to toon and make sure that they're capped on everything that they need to be. Sharing armor can be a bit frustrating, and that's where legendary armor comes in. Legendary armor is just a bit more convenient, as you don't actually have to trade it across. All legendary armor is available for every single character just to pick up whenever they need to. Ascended armor can be quite tough to get. In fact, this is pretty much the end game for most players. They don't really care too much for legendary armor, and to be honest, legendary armor is not that important. Let's have a look at a couple of ways of getting some ascended armor. First, before we begin, I want to look at Fractal Ascended Armor. I want to look at it and then never look at it again because I personally think this is the worst use of resources. The upside is they're stat selectable, which means when you get this, you can right click, say customize, and you can pick anything. Just do note that you can get Ascended Rings for Berserker stat for 10 pristines each. Although, I don't kind of recommend these. As, as you do fractals, and as you do higher tiers of fractals, you 
have the chance of getting an attuned ring, which basically means it drops with two slots. What you'll find is that rings can have up to three slots, and you kind of want three slots. But if they drop with one slot, it's easy to always put one slot in a ring, but to put a second slot is tough. So if it drops with two slots already, it's fairly easy to put a third slot in. Another mention, although I don't think it's worth it at all, is you can get to a Laurel Merchant, there's one also in the Fractal of the Mist, and they'll sell you some rings and amulets and accessories that you can use. This is kind of a way of getting some Berserker stats. Obviously you cannot get Viners and Harriers and um, some of the other stats, but you can get like Berserkers and Celestials. I don't recommend this. The Laurel cost is way too high. So with Frackles, there's something that I wanted to mention, and that is basically all the drops from Frackles, whether rings or armor or anything, weapons, all of it, only have a chance to drop the base game. And as you can look here, and I'll link this in the description below, all the release from base game stats have a chance to drop. Celestials has a chance to drop, Berserkers have a chance to drop, and a couple of other interesting ones especially Magi's, also not too bad for a few of the heal builds. Although, none of the expansion stats will drop. That means there's no Viper's chance to drop, no Ritualist, no Minstrels or Harriers, and also no Diviners. Now, there are two other ways that I highly recommend for you to look at getting your Ascended Armor, especially with stat-selectable armor. The first is actually Raiding, funny enough. Every week in raiding, you can get 300 magnetite shards, which means that you could probably pick up quite a lot of armor, weapons, and even a couple of jewelry. Although, notice that these are also base games, so another way to get yourself maybe your berserker stats. Another good way to get yourself some stat selectable ascended armor is by handing in your blue profit shards from strikes. All your IBS 5, IBS 3, which basically means your Ice, Ice Brute Saga strike missions, will give you a certain amount of Blue Prophet shards per day. I highly recommend doing them. They're also a really good way of getting used to the idea of a raid. A 10-man group going in, trying to cover all the boons and do mechanics. Especially the Ice Brute Saga ones are fairly easy and quick to do. You can knock out the IBS in a couple of minutes. And now we come full circle and end with crafting again. Crafting is obviously the most guaranteed and easiest way to get the armor. Although slightly time gated, you can get around it with a bit of gold. You simply go to the master NPC at your crafting station. You go to the supplies. You first have to go to insignia and scroll down to the bottom and buy the ascended insignia for 21k comma. That will give you a selectable option of which insignia you want. Generally, you'll probably go for Zojo's, but I'll so show you a little tip later on. Then your Ascended Recipe. You pick with it what you want, and it's quite steep. Five laurels and three gold. Take note of this for when I show you the little trick later. At the crafting station, you can have a look. Let's, for instance, look at the Zojo's shoulders. This over here is your best in slot power armor shoulders. You don't need any better than this. You don't need legendary. Building this though is slightly time gated and that's where the problem comes in. First of all, let's look at the insignia. Remember we got the recipe from the NPC. To build, you need to first create the exotic insignia, which we could have done from level 400. Once that's created, we need to make it ascended. The time gated part comes into play here. As to make the patch, we need to make the bolt and the leather squares, which each one is gated one a day. Therefore, it's going to take us three days to make the patch. Once the patch is complete, we have an Ascended Insignia. Then, on top of that, we'll need one bolt for the pad in and two leather for the panel. That means that it will take us about five days to make this shoulder. You can get away with it by buying the pieces straight out of the marketplace. You can either buy the complete pad in or you can buy the individual time-gated materials out of the marketplace. Generally, you're probably looking at about 20 to 50 gold, I would say, per piece. Although that can fluctuate whether you're on NA, EU, and also what's happening in the market at the time. But notice, this is base game stats. I.e., if we wanted something more unique, 
Like, say we wanted some Yadzits, which is Viper's stats. It gets a little bit more complicated, and that's where my little trick is going to come into play. It pretty much is the exact same crystal pad in a panel that we would have done for any other stat. But the insignia gets a little bit more interesting. You'll notice that it's not just a normal patch, it's a dual damask patch. Which requires either 25 and in weapons up to 50 of these fulgurites. A fulgurite is an obsidian shard and three materials. One from Verdant Brink, one from Auric Basin and one from Tangled Depths. Also note that if you make something from one of the other expansions, like for instance Path of Fire, it's also not going to be completely straightforward. They require something else, whether it's a Living World Season 4 material or something. Now you might be fine with this. You might be fine with paying these extra obsidian shards. Perhaps you've been playing the game for a long time. There is another way to basically take Ascended Armor and change the stats. And this can kind of save you a lot of time and headache. This is my little tip and trick that I want to show you. It's got a few steps, so maybe you want to maybe take some notes. Maybe I can help you <laughs> in the comments below. First of all, you want to go to the trading company and look for Savards. Savards is simply the Marauder stat from the base camp. You can buy weapons and armor Savards pieces out of the auction house. Some pieces, pieces can be quite expensive and some can be fairly cheap. Let's have a look at certain things. Like for instance a dagger. A dagger is maybe used quite a lot in condition builds. This dagger is 20 cents. This saves us the 3 gold and the 5 laurels to buy it from this NPC at the auction house rather than buying it by the NPC at the crafting station. We've already saved quite a lot here. Now we go back to the NPC. This character's off spec is weaponsmith. So now you'll go to the weaponsmith's lies, to the inscriptions, and buy another ascended inscription for 21k karma. And now you will choose the Savard's inscription. Let's have a look at my Savard's pieces. Here's the dagger. They'll cost us 20 cents to get the recipe for. We have the inscription because we've bought it now for 21k karma. Just like making ourselves other pieces of armor and other weapons, we're still going to need the, the time-gated materials, which is the slow part of making ascended weapons. But remember, this is endgame. Once these are done, you've got best in slot. So it kind of sort of is expected to be a little bit tougher than normal. You make yourself your exotic inscription, which is fairly cheap to make, especially for Savards. And at the end of the day, we complete the process and we get ourselves our dagger. Our dagger though has stats that we don't want. It's got Berserker stats, but our ferocity is split in two and we have got vitality. So vitality and ferocity are kind of halved in a sense. Now we don't want this. So let's use our imaginations a bit. I have myself here an axe that I would like to make ritualist. Let's pretend that it was a crafted piece with Marauder stats, i.e. the Savard's one that I'm talking about. We've already made some savings. We've saved a couple of gold by not buying the recipe from an NPC. We've saved a couple of laurels. We have this axe now. I want to make it a ritualist and I want to use it on my fire brand, my Connie Quick Fry brand for support. Now I have the piece. Now, first of all, I need to make the exotic exilia of the piece I want. I want to have the ritualist piece. Now, I don't have to make the ascended. I just need to make the exotic inscription or insignia, depending on whether it's a weapon or piece of armor. Now, note, I would probably, I would have to make this anyway. I would have to make the exotic inscription anyway if I was making the Ascended Peak. Create. Now we have the inscription for the piece. Now we need a couple of globs of ectoplasm. 
and we need to go talk to the NPC by the Mystic Fountain. Now we go to them and we buy an anthology of heroes for 10 spirit shards. Remember you get spirit shards from like opening chests and such, it's quite easy to get. Now all we do is we go to the Mystic Ford, we take our crappy Savard's axe, we take the things that we want to convert it, basically the exotic inscription, the anthology of heroes, and five globs, and we forge it. And now I've got exactly what I want. I've got myself my ritualist axe. Now that you've seen the little tip and trick on how to convert stats, you'll be able to get yourself full ascended weapons and armor and whatever stats you want. But what about accessories and jewelries and the like? Jewel crafting is not necessarily a very good profession to have in Guild Wars 2. There are uses and you obviously do need it for some legendary jewel crafting later on. But in terms of getting ascended, there's just such an easier, simpler way. If you have access to either Living World Season 4 or 3, you're smiling. Let's go take a trip over to Dragonfall. Now we're in Dragonfall, we go to one of the vendors. The three vendors at base camp in Dragonfall, for example, have, first of all, an amulet with stat selectable stats, and they've actually included the new End of Dragon stats like Ritualist. They have the amulet, the ring, and the accessory here. Now, please do note that you cannot make two of the same. So, I cannot have two of the same accessory. Otherwise, they just won't stack. Now, we can get these Mistborn Motes either by A, farming Dragon, Dragonfall itself, the map. Spoiler alert, if possible. Or... Another easy, easy way to do it is to actually go up to Bajora's March and collect all of the shards, all of the Eternal Crystal Eye shards on both sides of the map. Farm in the chest. There's actually quite nice routes that you can find. And then go into one of the NPC keepers at either of the waypoints and converting them into a Living World Season 4 map material. So you can convert them into Mistborn modes. And also, you can consume Mistborn Motes to get some Volatile Magic to quickly boost up and get these very quickly. In fact, you should be able to get about 100 to 150 per day Mistborn Motes. So probably in about two days, maybe three days, you can have this completed. And this is the most expensive one. Another option is to go over to the Sandswept Dials. Let's go there now. Welcome to the Sandswept Isles, probably one of my favorite maps to farm and to just be in. Such a pleasure. The NPC here also has a ring and an accessory. So with just Sandswept Isles and Dragonfall, you can actually have full ascended except for the back piece. Now when it comes to the back piece, there are achievements you can do in Season 4. Or you can take a hop over to Season 3. Welcome to Bitterfrost Frontier. A kind of a bit of a half map almost in a sense. There is a trail that you can do for winter berries. It's a trail that most people run as you run up the sides of the mountain and come down basically collecting all these winter berries and then you can come to the NPC here. They have race spreaders so underwater, a ring, a back piece and an accessory that you can trade for winter berries. And those aren't your only options. First of all, I want to shout out this wiki article and I'll link it in the description below. All Season 3 maps have options of getting um, amulets, backpacks, rings, accessories, all of this. The reason why I recommend Season 4 so highly is because Majora's Marsh allows you to farm Eternal Eye Shards really quickly that can be converted into Season 4 um, landscape materials specific to the maps. Therefore making you get them quicker. But if you want to farm the maps or you have excess of the Season 3 map materials, that's also a really good way of getting everything you need. Or if the Queen's Clash seasonal event is on, you can convert a lot of the items from that into Season 3 materials, making it quicker to get the Season 3. So it simply depends on just how you want to play the game. Remember, Guild Wars 2 is a game you play it your own way, your own pace. You can even pick these out of a World v World or a PvP reward track and get them that way. It's up to you. I hope you've enjoyed the guide. 
I just want to really thank everybody in terms of all the support with all the views and comments I've been receiving. And I really do hope to make some better content in the future that will really help the community. If you found this helpful, please subscribe and share with some friends. It will really help grow the channel. For more on this build and others just like it, catch me streaming on Twitch. Stop by any time and hang out.